Funding for this program was provided in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the financial support of viewers like you. Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there for you. these water glasses. Okay, each one has a different sound, oh. and together they make the scale. Really? Hey, Tito. I think somebody's calling you. Listen. Well, it's my name. Don't wear it out. Tito's getting real popular. Yeah. Mm, it's about time I'm getting the attention I deserve. Oh, brother. Ah, Mr. Conductor, come on in. Stay a while. Well, don't mind if I do, Billy. Hey, Mr. Conductor. How's Thomas and Bertie and James and Edward and everyone else on the island? Wow. <laughs> Let me think. Uh, well, good. Very good. Pretty good and awful. I think you're going to have to explain a little bit better than that, Mr. Conductor. Explain what? Well, explain what's happening on the island of Sodor. Well, that's what I've been trying to do. Thomas was having a good day, but Bertie wasn't having a good day at all. Well, let me tell you about it. Thomas the Tank Engine was feeling bright and cheerful. It was a splendid day. Good morning, he whistled to some cows, but the cows didn't reply. Never mind, said Thomas. They're busy with their breakfast. Next, he saw Bertie. Hello, Bertie. Care for a race today? But all Bertie could say was, Ouch! That's another hole in the road. I'm sorry, Bertie, smiled Thomas. Thomas was still in good spirits when Bertie arrived at the next station. Bad luck, Bertie. Now, if you were a steam engine, you would run on a pair of reliable rails. Huh, replied Bertie. The railway was supposed to deliver tar to mend the road two weeks ago. You can't trust a thing that runs on rails. I run on rails. You can trust me, Bertie. I'll see if I can find out what's happened. And Thomas puffed away towards the big station. James was snorting about in the yard. It's too bad, he grumbled. Percy goes to work at the harbor and I do his job. Here, there, and everywhere. Take that! Oh, groaned the freight cars. Just you wait. We'll show you. Gordon laughed. I'll tell you what, James. If you pretended to be ill everywhere, you couldn't shunt freight cars here or go to the quarry there, could you? What a good idea, agreed James. Look, here comes Thomas. I'll start pretending now. Thomas was sorry to see the engines looking miserable. Cheer up, he puffed. It's a beautiful day. Yes, grumbled Gordon, but not for James. What's the matter, asked Thomas. He's sick, replied Gordon. Yes, he is. I, I mean, I am, stuttered James. I don't feel well at all. Don't worry, said Thomas kindly. I'll help out if you're ill. Gordon and James snickered quietly to each other. Some of James's cars were coupled behind Thomas and he steamed away to the quarry. The cars were still cross. We couldn't pay James back for bumping us, so we'll play tricks on Thomas instead. One engine is as good as another. But Thomas didn't hear them. He collected all the stone from the quarry and set off back to the junction. Danger lay ahead. 
Now for our plan, giggled the cars. Go faster, go faster. They pushed Thomas over the switches. Slow down, called Thomas's driver, and applied the brakes. Poor Thomas stood dazed and surprised in a muddy pond as a toad eyed him suspiciously. Bust my buffers, muttered Thomas. The day started so well, too. Duck pulled away the cars, and Edward helped Thomas back to the junction. Suddenly, Thomas remembered the missing tar. He told Edward all about it. That's strange, said Edward. A car full of tar has been left at my station. That must be it. Driver will make sure it gets to Bertie now. Later, James spoke to Thomas. I'm sorry about your accident, he muttered, and so is Gordon. We didn't mean to get you into trouble. No, indeed, spluttered Gordon. A mere misunderstanding, Thomas. All's well that ends well. Just then, Bertie arrived. He looked much more cheerful. My road's being mended now. Oh, I am glad, replied Thomas. Thanks for all you did, added Bertie. Now I know I can trust an engine, especially if his name is Thomas. Gordon and James puffed silently away to the shed. But Thomas still had company. Well, well, he sighed. What a day for surprises. The toad, who was looking forward to a ride home, noisily agreed. Thomas showed once again that he's a trustworthy engine who can always be counted on. <laughs> Are you catching a cold? No, no, no. It's nothing. I'm fine. In fact, I'm going to take a trip. Where are you going? I'm going to the South Pole to visit a friend of mine. He's a penguin. <clears throat> oh, Mr. Conductor, you're not pretending to be sick like James. You're really getting a cold. I don't think you should be going anywhere, especially not to the South Pole. Ooh, it's so cold there, and look, you're hardly dressed for it. Please, don't worry about me. So you can take care of yourself, like Little Sneezer? And who, may I ask, is Little Sneezer? Have you ever seen one of these? Mm -hmm. It's a pop-up book. When you open it, something unfolds in the middle. Ooh. Stacy, I have an idea. Why don't you tell the story, and I'll supply the pictures? Well, that's a good idea, Mr. Conductor, but you'll have to listen very carefully because this is a story about catching a cold and what happened to little Sneezer because he thought he could take care of himself. He was the toughest kid in these here parts. He was the master of all martial arts. His hands were fast, his feet were quick. There wasn't a kid he couldn't lick. He was one tough dude, but please take note. He refused to button his overcoat, or wear a hat when the wind blew cold, or put on galoshes when he was told. That sissy stuff, it ain't for me. I wear what I want, I gotta be free. So off he trod into all sorts of weather, the front of his clothes rarely coming together. Stomping through puddles, he scared half the town. But there are some little dudes who he couldn't put down. They're smaller than ticks or flies or worms. They're mean, they're evil, they're nasty, they're germs. Just looking for kids with an unbuttoned coat to climb up their chest and jump down their throat. The more and more they come marching in with a slam to the head and a wham to the chin. They knocked him down, they laid him low, and soon he had no strength to go. Oh, the only running he was able to do was from his nose until his shoes. They squeezed his neck, they clouded his head, and threw him back upon his bed. But how did he take it? I leave it to you. With nose of red and hands of blue, he went, mm -hmm. ka -chi! Ka -chi! So what if I got a wuddy nose? I still ain't wearing all them clothes. <laughs> Well, that's all very amusing, but even if I had a cold, I could just use my magic to make it vanish. Oh, don't be so sure, Mr. Conductor. If you're not feeling 100%, your magic may not be 100%. Oh, that's right. All sorts of things could go wrong. Well, don't worry. Everything will be fine. I really must be going. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no! I've got to try that again. 
I hope he'll be all right. Mm. Me too. Yeah. yeah, he's not taking very good care of himself. Something's wrong. Mm. Mm, you know what's wrong? You have too much water in these two glasses. Here, Billy, have some. I'll have some of this. This water tastes a little strange. It's kind of, uh, tingly. Mm. Billy, do you think Mr. Conductor's magic could be sick, too? Well, Dan, if people don't take very good... <laughs> what happened to my voice? Billy, you sound just like me. What, what's happening to my voice? Mr. Conductor's magic dust must be in the water. Here, you take a sip of this one, and then I'll take a sip of this one. All right. Absolutely schemer, and he's me, and he's me. Hello, young fellow. Nice haircut. Thank you. Who said that? I did. Who else would talk about your hair? You can talk? I can talk about your hair. It's really nice. I ought to know, as a balloon, I get to see lots and lots of haircuts. This is great. I have a talking balloon with an exceptional amount of intelligence. This time, I can make a fortune. I can charge people money to talk to you. Hey, I don't just talk to anyone, you know. Oh, no, 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 of course not. I mean, obviously you have standards. I mean, after all, you're talking to me. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll just talk to people with a lot of class. And I want my own private supply of helium. Oh, anything you want, baby. Now, uh, let's continue our conversation about uh, my beautiful hair and good looks. Where is everybody? Hello? Who's here running the station? Miss Jones? Ah, Miss Jones. For a moment there, I thought no one was around. Mm, excuse me. I have a lot of luggage outside. Could I get someone to help me? Beg your pardon. You don't have to bite my head off. What is going on around here today? Ah, good. Water. Mm. I am thirsty. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute, Miss Jones. I want to talk to you, and I want to talk to Billy. What happened to my voice? Ah, Mr. J.B. King Esquire, exalted head. Just the man I was looking for. Uh, how'd you like to talk to my talking balloon? Not now, Schemer. I have more important matters to deal with. <laughs> you sound like a little girl. I'm not a little girl. I'm a big, strong man, and I run this railroad. I help build it with my own bare hands. Do you hear me? Don't call me a little girl. Boy, sure sounds like a little girl to me. I didn't like his hair that much. Yeah, I think it would look better in pigtails. <laughs> Come on, baby, let's split. Here's the plan. We'll play Mr. Conductor's favorite song, and maybe he'll hear it and come back. OK. okay. Tis I, Hans, the great Tito, and I'd like to thank all the little people who made this possible. <laughs> little people? Littler than us? He must be thanking his aunts. <laughs> <laughs> You're just jealous. Okay, Big Shot, here's a chance to show you puppets what you can do. Sir Bailey had an engine, it was always wanting mending. And according to the power, she could do four miles an hour. Did you ever see, did you ever see, did you ever see such a funny thing before? On the night run up from Gower, she did 20 miles an hour. As she whistled through the station, man, she frightened half the nation. Did you ever see, did you ever see, did you ever see such a funny thing before? Tasha Bailey's Auntie Anna, she played on the grand piano, she went hammer, hammer, hammer. 
all the neighbors said can't stand her. Did you ever see, did you ever see, did you ever see such a funny thing before? <laughs> The sight it was her rending car she drove his little engine and he got stuck in the tunnel and went up the blooming funnel. Gosh, a Bailey, he didn't die. And they put him in a coffin. But alas, they had a knock-in. Kasha Bailey only Joshin. Did you ever see, did you ever see, did you ever see such a funny thing before? Kasha Bailey had an engine, it was always wanting mending, and according to the power she could do for miles an hour. Did you ever see, did you ever see, did you ever see such a funny, did you ever see, did you ever see, did you ever see such a funny, did you ever see, did you ever see, did you ever see such a funny? Hey, Cap, what's going on? We're out of control. Full blood. How do you stop this thing? What's going on? Sex, full blood. Rex, help him. Dee Dee, this tempo's too fast. Grace, slow down the base. Tito's out of control. Tito's out of control. <laughs> hey, wait. Come on back, Mr. Conductor. Don't stay at the soap pool. Come back here. Come back, Mr. Conductor. Mr. Conductor? Is that you? I think it's a penguin. See, Mr. Conductor has turned into a penguin. <laughs> I don't feel very well. <laughs> yes, yes. I suppose you're right. Very well. Uh, I'll do my best. <laughs> All right, now come on. You and Billy stand together. Come on. There, that's it. Mr. Conduct... <clears throat> Thank goodness. <laughs> Mr. Conductor, I warned you not to go to the South Pole. You should have known better. But I had to go to the South Pole. The only thing you had to do was stay home in bed and get some rest. That... <clears throat> that's right. Your body was telling you to stay in bed and get some rest. But you wouldn't listen. No, I wouldn't. But, you see, the South Pole is, is where the penguins live. Yes? Well, they're my size. And sometimes, I just want to be with my friends, who are little, like me. <laughs> but, Mr. Conductor, we're your friends, too. Yeah, Mr. Conductor. There's something here we want you to see. Yeah. Would you please look into the picture machine? Always looking out for others, lending a helping hand when they need a little extra hustle or a little extra muscle, doing whatever you can. But now it's you who looks a little frazzled, now it's you who seems a little dazzled, and you need friends who take the time to care about you. Oh, the time has come to say you can. Depend on us today, you can depend on us to see you through. Just relax and take your rest because you deserve the best. Because anything we can do, we'll do for you. Anything we can do, we'll do for you. You're the kind of person always looking out for others Someone who understands when they need a story or a smile Chicken soup or flowers, doing whatever you can But now it's you who looks a little shaky Now it's you who seems a little quaky And you need friends who take the time to care about you Oh, the time has come to say you can Depend on us today, you can Depend on us to see you through Just relax and take your rest Because 
You deserve the best because anything we can do, we'll do for you. Anything we can do, we'll do for you. Mr. Conductor, you can stay here and rest and get over your cold. Yeah, we'll make a bed and take care of you. Yeah. Really? You would do that? Well, then I must get into my pajamas. I can't possibly get better unless I'm in my pajamas. I'll be back before you can say... <laughs> you made this for me? Yeah, so you can rest and grow strong again. It even has holes in it, so you can breathe when the top is on. I'm not used to people doing special things for me. You want us to tell you a story? Yeah. Let's see. Do you guys know when you need stories? Mm-mm. Nope. Well, how about I tell you a story? Okay, do yeah. yeah. This is a story about Henry, the green engine. He had an accident and then came back from the works with a wonderful new shape. I warned you beforehand, it has some sneezing in it. So stand back. Gordon was cross. Why should Henry have a new shape, he grumbled. A shape good enough for me is good enough for him. He goes gallivanting off, leaving us to do his work, and comes back saying how happy he feels. It's disgraceful. And there's another thing. Henry whistles too much. No respectable engine ever whistles loudly at stations. It isn't wrong, but we just don't do it. Poor Henry didn't feel happy anymore. Never mind, whispered Percy. I'm glad you're home again. I like your whistling. Goodbye, Henry, called Gordon. We're glad to have you with us again, but remember what I said. Later, Henry stopped at Edward's station. Hello, Henry, said Edward. You look splendid. I was pleased to hear your happy whistle yesterday. Thank you, Edward, smiled Henry. Shh, can you hear something? It sounds like Gordon, said Edward, and it ought to be Gordon, but Gordon never whistled like that. It was Gordon. He came rushing down the hill at a tremendous rate. He didn't look at Henry, and he didn't look at Edward. He screamed straight through the station and disappeared. Well, said Edward. It isn't wrong, chuckled Henry, but we just don't do it and he told Edward what Gordon had said. Meanwhile, Gordon screeched along the line. The noise was awful. At the station, everyone covered their ears. Sir Topham Hatt covered his ears, too. Take him away, he bellowed, and stop that noise. Gordon puffed sadly away, but he wouldn't stop whistling until two fitters climbed up and knocked his whistle valve in place. That night, Gordon slunk into the shed. He was glad it was empty. It isn't wrong, murmured Henry to no one in particular, but we just don't do it. No one mentioned whistles. Next morning, Henry was enjoying himself enormously. I feel so well, I feel so well, he sang. trickety truck, trickety truck, hummed his coaches. Then he saw some boys on a bridge. Beep, beep, hello, he whistled. Oh, he called. The boys didn't wave and take his number. They thought it fun to drop stones on him instead. They've broken our glass! They've broken our glass! cried the coaches. The passengers weren't hurt, but they were cross. Call the police! No, said the driver. Leave it to Henry and me. What will you do? they asked. Can you keep a secret? Yes, yes. Well then, said the driver, Henry is going to sneeze at those boys.
Lots of people were waiting at the station just before the bridge. They wanted to see what would happen. Henry has plenty of ashes, said the driver. Please keep all windows shut till we've passed the bridge. Henry's as excited as we are, aren't you, old fellow? Henry felt more stuffed up than excited. Soon they could see the boys, and they all had stones. Are you ready, Henry? said the driver. Sneeze hard when I tell you. Now, he said. Achoo! Well done, Henry, laughed his driver. Henry went home, hoping that next time he saw Gordon and the boys, they would have learned not to be so mean. Sometimes a sneeze can come in handy. <sighs> I'm getting sleepy. Thank you for the story. Well, you told it to us, Mr. Conductor. Oh, yes. Well, I thank me, then. You rest now and get your strength back. My talking balloon won't talk anymore. Really? Mm. Maybe it ran out of things to say. Yeah. It was only talking about my hair and how good-looking it was all the time. I mean, you could hardly blame it. <laughs> Oh, Becky! Becky! You got me a present, Becky! Oh, Becky, you're holding. Oh, no, isn't that no, nice? No, no, no. What is it? 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 I know, I know, I know. You want me to wait until my birthday, but the schemer, every day is his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a scarf and some earmuffs for a doll? What do I want with this for? I've already got a scarf and an earmuff for my doll. Hey, do you think Mr. Conductor is back to his old self again? I guess all he needed was a little rest and someone to take care of him. Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle. Go where the rail may run Reach for the words, reach for the story Follow the rainbow sun To a shining time station Where dreams can come true Waiting there for you So much to see, so far to travel So much to learn to know Friends by your side, hopes to hold on to, who knows how far you'll go. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true. Your own imagination, waiting there for you. Funding for this program was provided in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the financial support of viewers like you. This is PBS.